Hey, it's Justin Goff here. Uh, I'm with John Robb, who's a member of our Copy Accelerator program. And uh, John's got a really interesting story. He's a freelance copywriter who came over from the world of brand advertising uh, and then kind of got into the direct response world. And he's really been, just been crushing it lately. In the last basically two months, he's brought in around $35,000 uh, as a freelance copywriter, uh, which is pretty amazing considering where he was at before and kind of really how little knowledge you really had of like writing leads and writing sales letters and writing emails and stuff like that. Um, so he's had a pretty meteoric rise and his copy is really actually really damn good. So I wanted to get John on to kind of talk about how he did that, some of the struggles he went through, uh, how he made that transition. And then um, it really kind of your big transition, which is interesting is you kind of switched uh, you jumped into copy accelerator and you jumped into trying to get clients right as the pandemic was happening. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pick the perfect time. Yeah. I mean, actually t it turned out to be the perfect time bizarrely, but yeah. Um, so let's start. Okay. So you were doing brand advertising before. Give me an idea of like what that was like, who you were writing for and kind of what you were actually doing. Uh, so I've had, I got like 20 years experience uh, doing brand stuff, uh, mostly writing TV. Com when I started out, I mean, <laughs> the internet was barely a thing when I started out. I mean, I think it was, it was, it was kind of in its infancy. Um, so I was doing mostly TV commercials, print ads, like billboard posters. Uh, did a lot of stuff for Sony PlayStation um, when I was back in London. And then moved to uh moved to new york in 2008 just in time for the uh for the first crash <laughs> which so i got laid off I, I moved to new york and like six months later i got laid off um and that was when i started freelancing so i that was my, my the start of my freelance career which has been man nearly 12 years now then i guess yeah, it must be 12 years right um and then in the so then I bounced around. I, I live in Los Angeles now, um, but I've, like I shot commercials with a lot, <clears throat> a few things for Beats by Dre. Um, met Kanye West, you know, in a air hangar in uh, in a hangar in uh, Burbank Airport. Shot I think with Serena Williams there as well, which is she was really nice actually. Um, uh, yeah, what else? Like yeah, I mean, pretty, like pretty much any brand you can think of. Like I've written for. The the difference between so one of the differences between direct response and uh, and and brand advertising is like you brand advertising is like ninety nine percent rejection basically. I've I've written tens of thousands of scripts that I've never seen the light of day. Uh, I've worked on clients for like two years and never made a single piece of work in two years. Um, so yeah, that's like that's one of the differences. It's it's a lot more. Uh, it's so weird. It's it's weird looking at it now. When I was in, inside it, it was oh yeah, this is the way it works. But now when I look at it, I'm like, man, the waste in there is insane. <laughs> it's so it's so crazy. I've done jobs for Google. That's why. I mean, I've worked for Google. I've I've probably made about hundred grand off Google for doing absolutely nothing. Wow. Like agencies have. I probably shouldn't really say this, but whatever. Like agencies have got me in, and what I figured out was as a freelancer, they're they're actually they're actually billing me out for more than they were paying me. And so I was just an asset to them in there. They didn't, it didn't matter that I wasn't doing anything because they, they just needed me on the book so they could bill me out to the, to the clients. So I was like writing stuff, but none of it, I mean, shit, sometimes I wasn't even writing stuff. So I, I, I live like 20 minutes from most of the big ad agencies oh. here. Um, so I, some days I'd just go home and no one would even notice. <laughs> so what... <laughs> So, all right, so you, you did that for a while. What made you transition to kind of more direct response online stuff? Um, yeah, kind of weird. Well, failing forward, I guess, would be the, the way of putting it. I, like, I got sick and tired of, advertise, of, of brand advertising, and, and it, there's really only kind of a couple of ways you can kind of jump up the ladder there. You either, you got to either like fight your way politically into a, <clears throat> like a leadership role, like an executive creative director or something, um, which means, you're not writing stuff anymore. You're basically working with clients. I mean, you, it, I mean, working with clients, you're like kissing the client's ass all day, right. trying to not managing trying. clients. Basically. Yeah. Or you could start your own thing, in which case you're doing exactly the same thing. So I was looking at it as a freelancer and it, 
it, it, it's quite an ageist industry. So as a freelancer, like, you don't see, I'm almost, I mean, I'm 43 and I was like looking at it. I'm like, man, I'm going to get aged out of this pretty damn quickly. Like I probably got another, at the time, probably had another five years left in me or something, but you just don't, you don't see older freelancers. So I was looking around trying to figure out what my next move was. Um, decided to sell on Amazon, like started a brand, didn't know anything about digital marketing, didn't know anything about, man, I mean, like literally nothing. Like the concept of trying to get traffic, it just didn't make, I didn't, it didn't mean anything to me. So I was like, oh, just get on Amazon, sell this. Like I actually invented a product. I did everything wrong, basically. I invented a product, paid for a patent, which now I've got like probably, I think I've got about 3,000 units in my garage. That I sell like one a day on Amazon. So I might sell them in the next 3,000 days. My garage might be empty. Um, so I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I did the classic thing where I like got, did this, made this thing and I'm all like, oh man, this is going to really sell really well. I better buy, I think it was like the, the Q4 was coming up. So the holidays were coming up. I just fucking, I literally blew all my savings on this damn thing. And then, yeah, I think I was in it for about 50 grand, something like that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, I came out the other end of, 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 uh, of that experience with no money whatsoever, like no savings. And I was like still kind of trying to scrabble around and get brand advertising jobs. But I'd been studying like digital marketer, um, taking some of their stuff. And so I just started to learn like a lot about, you know, and not like super high level stuff, but enough that I was like, oh, okay, I kind of understand how this works now. And then, and the more I got into that, I was like, well, copywriters seem really important in this, a part of the puzzle in this. And I'm like, okay, I've, I mean, I've got that skill. Maybe rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, it might make it might just make sense to actually take that skill and 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 try and use it um, and make money from doing that. So yeah, that was my next. Uh, I kind of jumped into a couple of groups, uh, like paid for a couple of groups, um, and kind of learned the basics. And then I think I, that was probably about two years ago. I think maybe, um, and then, and then I was, but I was doing what everyone else does really. So I think the thing that I learned pretty quickly was when, like, everyone who teaches, um, they seem to have a common theme. No matter what they're selling, the common theme I found was they all work their asses off to get there. Um, you know, it, it, even even people who are trying to sell you like quick fix, like you know whatever whatever it is that they their selling pitch is usually like i bust my ass to get here you can like take a shortcut and not have to do it you can learn from my mistakes and it's like okay but like after a while you're like okay everyone busts their ass to get there so it just it kind of dawned on me i was like okay i gotta get some reps in like if if i want to get anywhere i need to start writing consistently which i think is a lot of problem is it's a big problem for a lot of freelancers is like you're in that vicious circle of like you can't get the clients to get the experience to get the clients to get it. And it's so you, luckily a, like a friend of mine who I've met in one of these, uh, in one of the groups kind of picked me, plucked me out of obscurity um, and said, look, I, you know, I think you're a good writer. You, he worked for an agency um, and he asked me if I'd come and write for that agency basically. Um, and the, the, I mean, the pay was, not great, but I was like, cool, yeah. Like, I and so I did six months there. What, where I was were, just, you, what were you writing there? Like emails, landing pages. Yeah, mostly it was more like short form ecom landing pages. If we if we were right, there was no real long copy. Um, and then, yeah, mostly emails. A lot of email campaign. Uh, uh, my brand's campaign, but yeah, basically, I was writing daily emails for a couple of brands. Um, well, and then a couple of monthly, weekly newsletters. Um, but that, that as well was quite an eye opener because you like, it's, you, you're working with clients and, and you're thinking, man, you could be making a lot more money than you're making. <laughs> and they're like, no, we don't want to annoy our, you know. There was one client who was like selling on Facebook. They, they started, they joined, they started selling on Facebook 
uh, when I joined. And the, the, the media buyer, the Facebook guy, was a brilliant, really good media buyer. And he, he was getting them like 58 ROAS or something. Like, yeah, it was freaking nuts. And it was as the pandemic kind of spiked or began and there was that weird kind of thing where suddenly, like, the algorithm shifted and everything became really cheap. Yep. But still, but the client was like, no, nah, we're happy spending 200 bucks a day. He's like, we need to scale this. And they're like, no, nah, no, nah, we don't want, we're comfortable with this. this is, we don't, it seems like a risk to like spend more oh money. Oh my God. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, that's kind of, like, how can you not see? I like, that like hurts me inside. <laughs> <laughs> me and him were having this conversation and we were like, we were, same thing. We was like, she was like screaming, like, what is going on? Like what? Oh. It's like put $1 in, get, I mean, yeah. minimum $10, maybe. I mean, the way the robots was, it was like insane. Um, but yeah, uh-huh. so I, I, I did that for, for six months. Um, and I was doing, uh, man, I was doing like f- at least four hours a day of what I, so I was doing eight hours a day, but I was billing. It was the kind of a funky set where I was like billing them by the hour. And so I was like, okay, four, four hours work was taking me eight hours basically with all my kind of getting up and being distracted by whatever the hell. Um, but yeah, I did that like solid, like every day for, for like six months and some weekends as well, which just totally shifted my, my mindset. Basically, I was like, okay, I, I was just like, okay, I can do this. Like, I know I can do it now. Right. Um, um, I want to fast forward to, so you came to our event that we had in Vegas uh, back at the end of February. Um, did you, I, I feel like you had already maybe talked to Stefan before then. Is that correct? Uh, kind of yeah so what happened was I did because uh, I was in I, when I joined up obviously we got the however many however much time there was left until the event we were we got um, access in the group and then he posted because he and then he posted a, a job in the high paying coffee jobs uh, to rewrite the lead for the for GSA 5 oh yeah okay um, so I I I, yeah, that was one of the, so I wrote that, so I wrote one for free and was just like, here, take this, like I've written this thing. Um, and yeah, so we chatted a bit basically kind of because of that. Okay. Cause yeah, I remember at the event, um, I didn't, I didn't know who you were. And then, uh, Stefan mentioned, uh, I remember you, you came in to have breakfast with us the one day cause mm. you were interested in joining the mastermind. And I remember Stefan mentioned it like, he was pretty convinced that we could make you a really good copywriter and get you a bunch of jobs. Cause he's like, I think John's pretty good already. He's like, I like a lot of the stuff he wrote. Um, and like I said, I had never seen any of your stuff, so I didn't know, but I trusted Stefan and, and kind of seeing your stuff now, I, I see exactly what he meant. Uh, you, you picked up the, a lot of the, just the principles of how to write a good lead, how to write a good email, all that stuff pretty damn quickly. And I mean, it's, it kind of shows like, with how it's paying off for you. I mean, you're, you're picking up jobs, you're getting new clients, uh, clients are coming back to you, which is always the best sign of you're doing something right. Um, yeah. but I want to, actually, I want to backtrack before we get there. So what was our event? I, I know you'd been in other, a couple other things like copy chief and stuff like that. Um, what kind of happened to you, I guess, I guess kind of thought wise and emotionally in terms of, when you came to our event, did it like kind of change the way you looked at direct response? Did you kind of see like, oh, there's a lot more out here that I could be doing? Anything like that? Yeah. I, yeah. It did. So I, I'd only written one sales page before I joined, before I joined the group. So, I, and I had, honestly, I was thinking about this when, I'm, when you asked me about doing this, like I had no interest in Brighton Health sales left and it wasn't that i was like oh this looks oh, this is shit i don't want to do it I like it i i couldn't get like looking at them i couldn't get my head around like where you would even begin to write one like because i'm looking at them like, i don't know anything about any of this stuff like i hated science in school i'm like i wouldn't even know where to begin and, and same thing looking at like magalogs before i even and before i even knew you existed basically i'm like oh, this just looks way too fucking tricky for me um and then i and then you know i went to i went to the event um and then on the first day i mean so i think yeah like you guys were you you guys were talking i mean jay's talk was just brilliant 
um, Jay Debolt. Um, and then the, the natural health Sherpa guys were, was, did a brilliant talk as well. And I don't know, mate, it was some, I was sitting there and I'm like, yeah, I can, I was like, look, I'm like, I can do this. Like, I, like, there's no reason why I couldn't do this. So I, I was, I didn't fully commit on the first, I, I mean, I kind of did. I knew I was going to join, but I was shitting myself because, excuse my language, because um, at the time I was making like six grand a month. From I had a uh, a blog retainer that I was doing like four uh, blog posts a month for, um, and uh, and then I was working for that agency, and I, I was getting about four grand's worth of work out of them, I think it was, and that was covering like my expenses basically, because I mean I live in LA, I got a mortgage and everything, it's not it ain't cheap out here, but I was so I. I was like, okay. And that's why I went to breakfast with you guys. Cause I mean, I, was, I basically sat there and I'm like, okay, I want to join, but I literally cannot afford to join. Do you, what do you reckon? And like, both of you were like, yeah, just do it. Like you'll be fine. Don't worry. And I'm yeah, like, okay. it's, it's funny looking back on that because um, I actually tend to lean the other way when someone's like, I can't afford it. And it'd be cutting it that close financially. I'm, I'm usually just like, okay, then don't do it. And if, it's a better fit later on than do it because I don't want to put you in a spot where you have to decide between eating and being in company. Right. So, but Ste like I said, Stefan was very convinced that if we just got you your first couple of clients uh, right off the bat, that you would get the ball rolling and you would do really well. Um, and he was right. I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's pretty obvious by your success so far making 30, 35 grand in what, like two months. I know, I know that first month was a little slow, but April and May, you really yeah. picked it up. Um, well, the first month was slow because I was, I, that was me like dragging my pills. I mean, jobs were coming up in the, I was, I, I was hitting up a few people that I'd met at the event and then, and there was a jobs dropping in the high paying coffee jobs. But I, like I was looking at them, them and thinking, oh yeah, I'm probably not really qualified to do this. I haven't really got any experience. And so I just sort of sat back. And it was, not, it's kind of, it's weird, but the, I mean, the pandemic, <laughs> the pandemic did me a massive favor, really. I mean, I, like I, I said, I, I lost my client, all my work on the same day. Uh, my, as the shit hit the fan, my, uh, the blog post retainer just like emailed me and I knew it was coming, it, even though it wasn't, I just knew it was going to happen. It's like, oh yeah, sorry. I know this might be bad timing. And I'm like, okay, okay. Start having a mild panic attack. And then. I'm like, okay, at least I got the agency thing. And then the agency, all the clients, gem, like, well, the, the highest paying clients all just up and shut down everything. And we're like, oh, we're not doing anything. And, and then they, and then the agency like cut my hourly rate. And I was like, damn, I can't, like, there's no way I can survive doing this. And right. you guys had a couple of, had those couple of extra um, Zoom chat calls for, for freelancers who were shitting themselves. <laughs> And I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds like that's something for me. Um, <laughs> and even then, when I was on that call, I was like, eh, I'm thinking, no, I'm not going to say anything. No, it's fine. I'm, I'll just, you know, I'll get through it. And then I was like, I'm really in trouble. I need some help. Um, yeah, and since, <laughs> since then, it's been roses. It's been... Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting how quick things changed for you. Uh, as soon as you kind of got past that initial fear and skepticism and really just plunged full both feet in and, and just started writing uh, yeah i mean i know we definitely helped you get a couple gigs and i know stefan's hooked you up with a couple um but like if you sucked and you weren't delivering like those would dry up but you are delivering like you're, you're hitting winners and I, I know you did a lot kind of reaching out on your own to a bunch of people um i, I like that one that you did with kyle and mindful health i know yeah, like yeah. You want to let's talk about that one because you really just kind of reached out on your own and uh, put that out there to make that one happen. Yeah, yeah. I just, I mean, I hit him up and um, to ask about doing affiliate swipes uh, again. Like, I didn't. Like, I've never, I'd never written an affiliate swipe before, <clears throat> before that. But um, yeah, I just went. I did the same thing as I did with Stefan. I just wrote something, um, and except for I didn't put. I put, I, did, I put this through the group as well. I mean, I, you know, you, you gave me great notes on it and I rewrote them and improved them. Um, and then, yeah, I just sent them to, sent them to him and said, Hey, like, you know, I'm not qualified to write this, but I've written this. And I, 
that's the thing with the group is it gives me like ultimate confidence that like the same thing where I just, I mean, I just wrote this sales letter um, to, in nine days and I'm, which for me is a record and I'm, and I'm writing it and I'm still obviously, you know, I'm still relatively new to this, but I'm thinking that voice in my head is saying, Oh, this isn't very good. Like this, this probably isn't going to work. And then I'm thinking, well, what, it doesn't make any difference, does it? I'll just write it and I'll post it in the group and you can do the hard work <laughs> and tell me where I've gone wrong. I mean, and that's the whole point of it, right? It's like, like it's not like I'm, I'm not intentionally writing garbage and being like, can you polish this for me? Even though it stinks. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it's, the group just gives me, gives me like a huge amount of confidence. And, it, and it's worked in a number of different ways because as well, talking to clients now, um, and negotiating with them, for want of a better word. Um, I know that I've got you guys to lean on, and that's an asset to them as well. Like, that's an asset to any client that I'm going to work for. It's like, I, like, I'll add a premium onto my rates because, like, you're literally getting, like, two of the best copy chiefs in the world. So, like, <laughs> like why, what, like, that... It's, it's like a bit, it's kind of a no brainer, right? It's right. It, it doesn't really matter what level of my, I mean, it does to a degree, but no matter what level my writing is, it's going to be exponentially improved by the fact I'm going to get notes. So, right. right yeah. um, so I want to dig into what have you kind of primarily been writing? So you mentioned affiliate swipes. What, and then you mentioned, you just wrote a sales letter. Uh, what other kind of stuff have you been writing? Mostly sales letters. Uh, I've done six, I think it is five or six now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, I honestly was like, I did, I, I didn't want to write sales letters. I was like, oh, these are too daunting. They're too long. But I mean, Stefan, the way the RMBC, the way he breaks it down, it just, something in it just works for me. Like it clicks in my head and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like I'll plug this in here. I'll plug this in here. I'll plug this in here. Yeah, I know how to write a mechanism. You know, it's it just to, it, it it just totally works for me. Unlike a lot of other things that I've looked at, where you know it's they're like way more daunting. You know, it's like tell them why the thing is good and tell them what it does for them, and then to, and it, you're just like ah oh, fuck, it's like too overwhelming. Um, but with this, yeah, so I've been really enjoying it. it honestly, I'm like all I want to write is sales letters now. Like if that was if that was an option, which it maybe it is, I don't know. I, like I would happily just sit and write like sales letters one after another after another. Um, nice. Are you writing mostly full sales letters? Or are you doing leads? Like yeah, I've done. Uh, so I did a couple of leads. Um, well, I, well, I actually mentioned like, off the back of that off the back of that affiliate swipe that I did for Kyle uh, for Mindful Health. Uh, they then asked me to write a couple of leads for the same, for the same product. So I did that. Um, but yeah, and then five, just five or six full uh, sales letters. Yeah. Okay. And most of those have been in the health niche? Yeah, all of them. Okay. Um, so kind of getting to where we're at now, like I said, you've had, I don't know, two, two and a half months of really good success so far. Um, what's kind of your plan for, let's say the next like six months, is there like an area you want to get better at? Is there spots where you see like, all right, this, this is an area I can really improve and I, or maybe I want to start writing for this client or anything like that. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't really got my eye on it. I, I do want to hit a fee shred at some point. Um, cause I spoke to Nick at the event. And and I said and I was and I was honest with him. I said, look, I haven't got any experience. Like I've written one sales letter, so but I would love an opportunity to work with you. Um, and he said to me, look, go away and learn this thing. And you know, I'm super um, not harsh, but he's, you know, like he's he's very candid about. It. Like he gives, but he's like very particular about the way he wants things. Um, his words, not mine. I haven't worked with him, so um, but like. So I went away and learned and, you know, I, I think I'm getting to that point where, yeah, I'd love to write something for them. Um, but not, 
I'm just still learning, basically. I mean, I'm learning a lot of stuff. It just, even off people in the group, um, like, you know, I'm just picking up things here and there. Like the way, I think like Brian, whose last name I'm not going to pronounce correctly, so I'm not going to bother trying. It, it, he, like, I'm, I was, I looked through, if anyone posts this, I was like, uh, uh, and, leave, and leaves it open because I know some obviously sometimes I, I sometimes you can't because you know the client you don't want people to be looking at it if the client doesn't want you to um, but yeah anyone who posts something I go I take it and read it like I'm looking through to see bits that like where I can improve I think and Brian's great at <clears throat> writing uh, like dimensionalizing benefits I think I'm like looking at his writing I'm like man this is really the way he does that it's really good so I'm just gonna swipe the shit out of it <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to learn off that. Um, you know, even like Brian Hunter's letter the other day, like the flow of it was brilliant. The way it was like way more conversational. So I'm lo like looking at that. I'm like, okay, what can I pick up from this? So I think, I think that's another great thing is that the group, there's a, there's a lot of good, the level in there is generally a very good level, you know, um, yeah. like Heath's advertorials are great as well. And yeah, like I've never written advertorials. So I'm like, every time you post an advertorial, I'm like, okay, how can I, what can I learn off, off this basically? So, um, so one question I have for you after having kind of this much, much success, looking back on kind of where you were at, I don't know, let's say February, March, and before you kind of just dove, like I said, head first into the deep end out of this, um, what would you, what would kind of be your advice for anybody watching this? Who's like kind of newer at copywriting and just, like I said, kind of, I don't know, hesitant to really go full go at it uh, and really just, yeah, dive head first in. Like what, what would actually be your advice to them based on what you've seen? Um, I think in, in terms of uh, the group or in general? No, just copywriting in general. Well, I think A, you've got to get the reps in. Like you, you, the only way to get better is to be writing like constantly. And whether that means doing your own thing for like doing it for people for free or like using your own initiative, which I know is very, it's a really daunting thing to do if, if you don't like when you're beginning, but that's one of the things that's worked really, really well for me is like writing stuff for clients who haven't even asked me to write stuff for them and send it to them and saying, Hey, I've done this thing. Um, you know, I've, I've just like it, it to me, that's a no brainer. I know to some people it seems like, man, that sounds like a massive waste of time. Like you spend a lot of time doing something, but like it's opened a lot of doors for me. Um, but yeah, I think it's tr like trying to get like experience that you're writing constantly, even if it's, even if the pay sucks and whatever, just like get that experience because it's invaluable. It, it gives you confidence uh, you, and you start to automatically know like, you're not second guessing whether you can do something. You're like, oh yeah, I've done this before. I know how to do it. You know, you've you've got a library of things that you can just go back to and be like, okay, I've got to write this sequence, and it needs to do this. So okay, I've written this one before, and I can just do this. And after a bit, that just becomes kind of habitual. So I'd say that, and then like, the, like, I mean, just to take it to the next level, like like invest in yourself like you have to invest in yourself uh, like and that mean whatever that means paying to get into like because it the best way to learn this is to learn off someone else like if you're in a vacuum and you just write and over and over again yeah you're going to get better but you're not going to know where I, I think that's that was the thing that really worked for me working for that agency was um <laughs> it, hilariously even though they i mean they didn't have a copy chief but my friend kind of was like he was he had more experience than me so he was like copy chief in my work um but yeah if you're not if you're in a vacuum and you're not getting notes you're not really improving um it's, it's tough to improve because you, you tend to ingrain a lot of bad habits too right yeah. um but I, I and i definitely agree with that and i definitely agree with your first thing which is when starting out reps by far the most important part uh which is really just like anything i mean if you're learning how to play golf like you need to be hitting a hundred golf balls every day for three months. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't just hit golf balls once a week for the next three months and think you're getting better. It's just, you have right. to, you have to write every single day. Uh, it's really the only way to get better. Yeah. 
Right, and you can't go and read a book about golf every day and suddenly be a better golfer. Because <laughs> I think I'm terrible at that. I've got like hundreds of books that I'm like, oh, I'll just buy this other book and read that and maybe it will help me. But like, there is no like, oh. um, like I can't think of the word, Re replacement, I guess, for just, you got to get your hands dirty and get, just do it. And even if it sucks, like you just carry on and carry on and carry on. Because I didn't know, like, I had copywriting experience, but I didn't know how to write direct response, direct response copy at all. And I didn't, I had no, <clears throat> like, brand advertising doesn't, we didn't do anything about psychology. Like, absolutely zero. The only point of brand advertising is to show other brand advertisers how smart you are. Like, that was literally, like, you get awards for, off other copywriters for being, oh, look at the clever idea you came up with, whether right. it sold anything or not. So I like when we never touched on psychology at all. So I, I, I didn't know anything about that stuff. You just, but I just was like, okay, I gotta get, I gotta get stuck into this and just figure it out basically. One of the things you kind of brought up with reading the books, which is interesting. I, I think in a lot of people, the books just become, become a form of procrastination. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, I gotta learn more. Oh, after I read that, I'll start actually writing copy. Oh, after I get better and know more, I'll start writing copy. And it, it turns into this thing where you're reading, I got to read 12 different copywriting books and then I'll get started. And, um, I always use the example, Blake, who's in copy accelerator teaches, uh, men's dating stuff. And he has guys all the time come up. They're like, Oh, I've read this book, this book, this book, all this stuff about dating and psychology stuff. And he's like, you know, it would really help go talk to 50 girls. Like that'll actually help you way more yeah, right. <laughs> than sitting at home reading books about women. Um, and the exact same thing is with copywriting. I mean, even if you're writing little things like emails and ads and stuff like that, uh, constantly writing every single day is it's the quickest way and really the, the only way to get to get better. Uh, as fast yeah, as I think the thing with e and the thing with emails and, and with Facebook ads is it's it's a really it's really accessible. Like you just go on Facebook and like look go on ad library and find like brands that like and copy their. I mean, don't cop, but swipe them and rewrite them. And like, you can practice doing that. I think sales pages is obviously a bit trickier because it's such a daunting <laughs> thing when you're starting out. But, but I mean, I, like, I, like I said, I'd only written one sales page before I joined Copy Accelerator. So, like, well, I don't know. If that's, I was going to say, I mean, if I can do it, then. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even want to write sales pages. So, <laughs> I guess um, I'd write it. What a great advertisement that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, man. So we're going to wrap this up. But yeah, honestly, super. Steph and I have both been super proud of your success so far. Um, Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I mean, I, I really appreciate both your help, man. It's been. It's been to, to see what, to see what insane, you, like the way see what you've accomplished in, in two and a half months, uh, going from a guy who, like you said, lost his income and was in a completely different world doing brand advertising for so many years um it, it's it's pretty remarkable uh and I, i'm personally super excited to see where you go in the next uh six to 12 months because i i can just tell reading your stuff now that your copy is getting better and better your stories are getting better um and you're gonna start writing some big winners i feel like thanks man thanks yeah i'd love to yeah, I got my, it's the other thing joining the group as well. Now I'm like, I want to start my own offer. Like I'm, that's what I'm looking at next. I'm, I'm not next, not short term, but long term, longer term, but within 12 months. I'm like, man, yeah. I'd like, cause again, I'm look, you know, I'm surrounded by all these super smart people in the group and, I, but I'm like, okay, they're, they're doing it and they've taken the exact same. I mean, take you, for example. I mean, you've taken the exact same path that I could take. So I'm, I'm like, well, or to put it a better way, I guess, like where I am now, you were here, right? But now you're where you are. So I'm like, okay, I can get there. Like you, if you can get there, I can just follow your footsteps to get there. Like it's not, it isn't rocket science basically. But It's not, it's not. Right? <laughs> but that's, it's amazing to, to, to kind of, to have that click in my brain and be like, oh, hold on a second. Like I'm no different than these people. I can do this as well. Um, but yeah, definitely, man. I want seeing everyone's success in the group, like starting offers and stuff, like seeing Jeremy doing really well. And, you know, Blake's thing today where he's talking about, I'm like, oh yeah, man, I want a piece of that as well. <laughs> awesome, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to helping you do that and, and seeing you do it. Um, 
Cool, man. So appreciate you coming on. Uh, appreciate you sharing your story. I'm sure a lot of freelancers listening to this will will get a lot out of it and probably be inspired by your story. So appreciate you uh, sharing everything. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you.